everybody, it's Lori here with my February book wrap up for the month. So I have read a total of 18 books in the month of February, which I think is really good because it's the shortest month of the year. And overall, I think it was a pretty good reading month. I only had one DNF for the month, which I think is really good. I had one, one and a half star. I had a two star, two and a half star. I had six, three stars, two, four stars, one, four and a half, and five, five star reviews. I'm starting to rethink like my half stars. <laughs> Because it's harder to keep them, keep track of them, I guess. I don't know. We'll see how that works. But that is how it all played out. I think overall, five five-star ratings is really good. So I think overall, having five five-stars is pretty good. So let's get into the specifics of the books that I read and talk about them a little bit further. So my one DNF for the month was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. And I know... <laughs> A lot of people have loved that book. It was not a favorite for me, obviously, if I DNF'd it. Got about 180 pages in and decided it was depressing. I don't know what it is about the book because it's not inherently depressing. <laughs> the topics that are covered shouldn't have made me so sad. There's just something about the tone. It just wasn't something that I was able to handle at this particular time. I got 180 pages in and it's quite a long book. So I'm not saying that I will never pick it up again. It just, for some reason, it just wasn't the right time for me to read it. Maybe it's a summer read. You know, when it's bright and sunshiny outside, I can sit outside on my back patio and read it. I don't know. I'm not saying that I will never pick it up again, but for now, it's a DNF. The next book was was Bleeding Heart Yard by Ellie Griffiths. I gave that a one and a half star. This was about a group of friends that 21 years prior had murdered a classmate. They say, they tell you that right off the bat. That is not a spoiler. It's in it's on the jacket of the book and they tell you that they murdered a classmate and when they go to their reunion another classmate ends up dead and the premise was great like I was thinking this is going to be so exciting this is going to be really good it doesn't normally start off that way where we have main characters that tell you that they've committed a murder so I was really looking forward to seeing how this all played out it was so repetitive and boring because we just had over and over and over again the same scenario explained from different points of view I think and I said this in my review I think if it had been told from one point of view like perhaps the detective on the case would have made it so much quicker of a story would have moved along but then unfortunately I think that would have made it a short story I don't think there was enough there truly to fill a book I'm sorry to say and so it felt like it was spread out this way just to fill pages so unfortunately I don't know I'm gonna read one more book from this author in the Ruth Galloway series which I had started already I read one book it was an okay read so I'm gonna go back and to that series and read the second book in the series on that one at some point this year see what I think decide if you know she's an author for me I know a lot of people have encouraged me to go back and read another book from her so I will do that and I'll let you know what I think after I read that one next on our list is a crafter knits a clue from Holly Quinn this was the first book in a cozy mystery series that I saw at my local library and happened to just grab it I didn't know anything about it didn't know reviews anything like that I gave this a two star I think felt like our main character was <laughs> really annoying, which doesn't typically happen in cozies. This one just was so nosy, so annoying, and she was always, <laughs> she was being mean to the cop who she was trying to help, but it just felt like obstruction to me. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm not going to continue with the series. I gave it a two star. I noticed that there were only three books in the series, so I don't think it did particularly well. I tried it, just not for me. Valentine Murder by Leslie Meyer was one of a book, uh, two books that were in a compilation that I read as part of Valentine's Day week. I would say that her books typically, the older ones, have not aged particularly well. I found some issues with definitely fat phobia, which has continued, and there was a touch of homophobia in there which made me very uncomfortable so I would say that because of those elements I was cringing throughout this book and while it was a fast read I was happy that it was over I would say overall it was a two and a half because I have history with this series with these characters it was nice to kind of catch up with them remember because I had read this book in the past remember this book remember the characters 
kind of jump back in. I wanted to see if the series has improved. I would say a little bit, but we'll continue. I'm going to read a few more books in the series and see how I feel. I don't know. I'm going to get them from my local library. I'm not going to be paying for the books. And so we'll go from there. The next book that I read in that compilation was Chocolate Covered Murder, also by Leslie Meyer. I gave that one a three star. I think that was a little bit better. The fat phobia still exists and the misinformation about diets was ridiculous, honestly. So that of course has me like rolling my eyes, but I think overall the book was better. I enjoyed it more. It, Like I said, it's nice to catch up with these characters. It's a very long running series. So while I will continue, I probably won't be, like I said, purchasing any more books in the future. Based on a lot of recommendations that I've seen, I picked up a Dial A for Aunties. This reminded me a lot of Finley Donovan. So if you like Finley Donovan, you might like this book. There's a lot of hijinks, I keep saying, but that's pretty much what it is. There are a lot of things that you have to really suspend disbelief. Anything that could go wrong absolutely did 100% there were impossible situations improbable situations that happened and they got into a lot of trouble our main character and her aunties I thought the relationships between them and the fi family dynamics were wonderful and very heartwarming there, I don't know if I laughed as much as I should probably should have I didn't find it as funny I found it more silly than anything else so I'm not sure that this is exactly my sense of humor or not I'm going to read the second book in the series I think that one's dial m for murder or something along the, those lines I'm gonna do a second chance showdown TBR upcoming. So you'll see that. That's kind of a preview spoiler. That will be upcoming in the next months or so. And I will try the second book and to give you my impression of that to see if I want to continue in the series or not. But overall, I gave that book a three star. We had a couple of cozies that also both came in with three star reviews. Killer Cupid from Lauren Berenson, I think that's how you say it. This is a long running series and this is her latest book in that series. We have Melanie Travis and her husband who go away for a Valentine's Day retreat. They take one of their poodles along with them and of course a murder happens and they decide to Melanie does of course work behind the scenes to try to solve it typically in these books she goes to a lot of dog shows she does breed and tra breed train and show standard poodles I like those books a little bit better I will say I'll probably go back and read a couple of the books in the series pick up kind of where I left off and see if I want to continue it overall it was a fun Valentine's Day read I don't know if it pushed me to want to read a book right now but definitely will you know it's encouraging me to pick up another one in this series. The next book that I read that was also a three star was 12 Slays of Christmas by Jacqueline Frost. This one was a little bit out of season because it does take place around the Christmas holidays, but I hadn't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> on my local library shelves around that time. This takes place at a Christmas tree farm in Mistletoe, Maine, where our main character has moved back home after a very recent breakup. She was supposed to get married right around Christmas and that obviously didn't happen and she goes home to kind of mend her broken heart and work on the Christmas tree farm. I enjoyed it. I think it could have been improved a little bit with, you know, I'm being nitpicky here with some recipes. Would have been fun. All of the food just sounded so delectable. <laughs> <laughs> my mouth was watering and I really wanted to make some of the items that were discussed. But overall, I thought it was cute. I think if I had read this around Christmas, I might have rated it a little bit higher and I will be definitely picking up the second book in the series. Per usual, I kicked the camera when I went to move my foot because it's falling asleep. <laughs> so the angle might be a little bit different, but moving on to the next book, was The Drift by C.J. Tudor. I gave this also a three star. This really wasn't at all what I was expecting, but it wasn't bad. I <laughs> you know, ring endorsement, but it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I, it did keep me guessing, I will say that, but I don't know that I like the type of book that it is, and I can't really say too much because that gives it away. I think there's a lot of spoilers, so if you talk too much about it, it will 
<laughs> it will give main pieces away and I don't want to do that. I think that this book unfortunately is getting a lot of low ratings. I don't think it was bad. I think it was just an average read. But again, this is not exactly my cup of tea in terms of, you know, the tropes that were involved in the book. So overall, a three, it was just okay. And the final three star is A Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. We have our married couple that's been married for about 10 years, I believe it is, that go away on a trip. And our main character has won to this very deserted, I mean, I wouldn't stay, very deserted place in the middle of winter. There's no other building. Well, there's buildings, but there's no other inhabitants that they can see. There's no gas stations. They have very strange, they have a freezer full of cooked meals, but a very primitive kitchen. And I don't know, I would have turned right around. <laughs> noped right out of there. I will tell you but conditions are deteriorating in this snowstorm and they feel like they need to stay there they have no cell service both of the spouses are lying to each other and so i was thinking okay it's gonna be a slasher thriller horror type novel and it didn't end up being what i thought it was gonna be but not in a good way i thought this kind of like meandered along and wasn't at all what I hoped the book could have been. So overall, while I didn't hate it, I would give it a three star. And I can see why, you know, there are several people that really didn't like it. I've seen some reviews and I can see why. It just didn't hit the right marks for me to give it higher than a three star. Okay, we have a couple of four stars. The first one is Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne. I read this as part of a Valentine's Day word vlog. So we have our main character who is a very fancy writer. <laughs> <laughs> she does not calligraphy, but very fancy writing. And she writes in people's planners. She used to do wedding invitations. And for her last wedding invitation that she did, she embedded a hidden message in the print. And it sounds like she did some drawings for it as well. She included some a hidden message in there. She doesn't think that anybody else will be able to spot it because she hides it really, really carefully. But actually, the groom spots it. And so a year later, he shows up and confronts her, asks her why she put this hidden message on the invitations. And it starts a very unlikely friendship between the two of them. But it was really interesting. The story went off in tangents that I did not expect. There was a lot more going on than meets the eye. I thought it was just going to be like this cute romantic story. And there was a lot of things that happened individually and kind of talked about things that were going on in their own lives. So they were very interesting characters. It was an interesting premise. I enjoyed it and I gave it a four star. The next book I actually just finished recently was A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. It's the Veronica Speedwell series that is much loved and treasured. There are a lot of books in this series so I wanted to dive in and see what I thought. Veronica and Stoker who ends up kind of being a protector of sorts for her and a companion embark on this journey to try to figure out why there are people that are seeking to do her harm after the death of her two guardians and so they're trying to figure out why and what the history is there. I thought that it kind of bogged down in the middle and I explained this a little bit in my weekly wrap up that I did where I think that that information might be helpful in the future so we'll see I'll see if that's correct or not because I really kind of felt like it bogged down it was much slower paced than I thought it was going to be that it was just going to be non-stop action but I did enjoy it I love the two main characters so I'm interested and excited to pick up the next book so definitely a four star I gave the burning girls by CJ Tudor a four and a half star because I figured out what was going on pretty early in the book so unfortunately when that happens I have to downgrade it a little bit I like to be totally surprised but in this case you know I kind of figured out what was going on we have a vicar and her daughter who move in to take over a new parish lots of things are happening lots of spooky scary things are happening and they try to figure out why and what's going on they have the backstory of the burning girls that were burned for their standing up for their beliefs in the past and so you don't know if it's a ghost story 
or if there's something even more sinister going on. Thought it was good, but like I said, I pretty much had figured out some of the main parts to this. And so I will give this a four and a half star. I'm very excited to read more books from CJ Tudor. Now we're moving on to our five star reviews. The first one was The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This was such a cute fake dating trope. I absolutely love this. So we have two scientists. He is grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> All of his students are terrified of him, but she grabs the first person in the hallway, of course it's him, to kiss, to th try to throw off her roommate and make her think that she's not interested in the guy that she went out with a couple of times that the roommate really wants to date. And of course, it's this professor. She gets him to agree to fake date her. They meet up every, I don't know if it's Wednesday, for coffee. They get to know one another. And of course, sparks fly. I thought it was really fun and super cute. Definitely a five star. A shocker to me, we had another romance that I rated a five star. It's The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This was absolutely adorable and heartwarming. We have our main character who's a ghost writer for a very famous romance writer and she is tr she just doesn't believe in love anymore and she's trying to push her deadline out with a new editor. He totally disagrees with it. He says no you have to finish the book as you promised. She's just not feeling it. She just doesn't believe in love and so how is she supposed to write a romance novel for one of the most famous Rome romance writers in history and she just she can't come up with anything good to write about. She has a tragedy in her family that pulls her away. She goes back, spends a lot of time in her hometown, which I thought was really heartwarming. I loved the scenes with all of her family members and reconnecting with her family members and with the people in town. Loved that. Oh, and by the way, she also can see ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> just like her father can as well. And she starts to see this handsome ghost that shows up and they converse and she starts to fall in love with him. It's just very, very heartwarming and cute. I loved everything about this. Definitely a five star. I highly recommend it. I know it gets really good reviews and it's for a reason. It's really good. Next, we have a cozy, which is Meet Your Baker by Ellie Alexander. This is a very long running cozy series that I had never heard of before. So I'm very excited that I read Rated this first book a five star. We have Jules who has returned from working as a pastry chef in the cruise ship industry after a breakup or you know she's got questions about her marriage. She hasn't really decided whether or not she's going to continue in her marriage. It takes a really long time in the book to figure out like what happened. I just kept wanting to know like okay what happened that leave you know that left her so heartbroken but she comes home to help her mother at her pastry business which is called Tort and of course she she finds a dead body in the pastry shop after hours <laughs> and so she's trying to help her mom she's trying to heal her broken heart and she's trying to solve this case i loved it i loved the characters i loved the small town atmosphere there are recipes everything sounded delicious and delectable i'm excited to continue this series the next five star book that i have is the rose code by kate quinn i love all of her novels there was no doubt unless it was absolutely just an outlier that this would have been a five star it definitely was amazing and i absolutely love it he had a bunch of female code breakers in World War II. And we learn about the day-to-day -day life, what led them to become code breakers, what it was like to actually be in their shoes. And then a little bit after the war, it was just so heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. I mean, I laughed, I cried. There was a lot of crying, as I said. I think I said in my review of the book. It, it was so good. It's a tough read in many respects because it's so emotional because it's historical fiction. So you know that there were a lot of people that went through this exact thing. And so it just makes it all the more real. And because obviously you know of all the atrocities that happened in the world wars, it just is so heartbreaking. I loved it. it I need breaks in between my historical fiction because they are such tough and emotional reads for me, but definitely a five star. And the last book that I read this month was The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. It was obviously a five star for me. I really enjoyed this book. We had 
dual timelines basically where there was some looking back back in the 70s and now we have a true crime blogger which I absolutely love true crime so that was really fun to see a little bit of that and then this female serial killer or so-called female serial killer from the 70s and the cases that were still unsolved their paths cross they, they forge a little bit of a friendship I would say and I don't know that I would go so far to say that they work together but I would say that our blogger definitely works on solving the cases and having resolution to all of the things the crazy things that are happening the house is crazy there's a lot of crazy things that happened a lot of fast-paced action and I it kept me guessing I will say I wasn't really sure who to trust who to believe what was going on there was a lot of things happening that I couldn't really explain that were kind of creepy, I will say, and kept me on the edge of my seat. I really, really enjoyed this book and definitely gave it a five star. Now that my feet and legs and hips are totally <laughs> asleep, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I think overall it was a great reading month. I had a lot of great reads this month. Let me know what your favorite read of the month was. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye everybody. Thank you.